Hello and welcome back to ECS Coffee. My name is Rebecca and this is the showdown between the Breville Barista Touch Impress and the Breville Oracle Touch. We'll start off by uh, just having a look at some of the similarities and differences of these machines. Um, today we are going to be using the Colombian Espresso roasted in-house in our Bellwether Roaster from 1.21. So this is, as you may know, one of my favorite espresso blends. It's what I use at home almost every single day. The milk chocolate notes mixed with the orange gives it the perfect balance between being creamy and rich while also maintaining some of those fruity qualities that I personally really enjoy in an espresso. This produces a beautiful, beautiful crema and it's very, very creamy. So as a black coffee drinker, I love it, but it also tastes really complimentary when you use milk or use it in a cappuccino with some steamed milk. It enhances the sweetness that you may get from that milk chocolate note that's uh, in this bean. So really, really great coffee. You know that I love it. I have it in every single video. Um, so great coffee. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the uh, major differences between these machines. And then we'll also kind of touch on some of the similarities and why these two are competing against each other. So one of the biggest differences right out of the gate is they are, they have massive price differences. So the Oracle Touch is almost twice as much as the Barista Touch and Press. So the Oracle Touch is priced at $4,300 Canadian. So you are uh, spending a little bit of money with this machine. It's very close to being a super automatic though. So you're paying for that sort of convenience. With the Barista Touch Impress, it's priced at $2,200 Canadian approximately. Um, so yeah, nearly half the price of the Oracle Touch. Now let's talk about kind of why that is. Why are you spending almost twice as much money on the Oracle Touch? Touch when the Barista Touch Impress, if you watch any of the videos, you see that it has similar functions to the Oracle Touch. So the Oracle Touch is a dual boiler system. So it has a boiler for brewing your espresso and a boiler for steaming your milk. The Touch Impress is a thermoblock heating system, which is a single boiler system unit. A thermoblock heating system is different than a boiler system. It heats the water that's being used instantaneously um, based on the function that's being performed. A dual boiler allows you to do both functions at the same time. So you can brew your espresso and steam your milk simultaneously, which is great on a machine like the Oracle Touch because you do have a automatic frothing wand that does have a manual option if it's in the upright position. Um, a dual boiler is also a lot more stable in heat. So it's, it's a more expensive heating system. You also have a 58 millimeter portafilter on the Oracle Touch. So you can see that here. So as we know, uh, 58 millimeter portafilters are a more commercial size. The thought behind it is that you're going to get a more even extraction because of the distribution of the coffee grounds within the portafilter. The uh, Barista Touch and Press I don't have anything against 54 millimeter portafilters. I have a machine with one myself, um, has the, but the Touch & Press does have the 54 millimeter portafilter. So you have more coffee grinds for the water to move through vertically as opposed to them being distributed horizontally, okay? The Oracle Touch comes with the knock box in its box as well. So that's kind of built into the cost. Um, and you, of course, both machines do have the touch screen, uh, which is built into the cost of the Oracle Touch as well. On the Oracle Touch, you have automatic tamping, but the way that it tamps is different than the Touch and Press. You see on the Touch and Press, we have the handle here. So that is the Impress Puck system. That's where you're going to pull the lever down and it's going to tamp and apply the correct amount of pressure. When we start brewing with the Oracle Touch, you'll see that it actually tamps internally here, no lever needed. So we're gonna brew a number of different beverages with uh, both of these machines. We'll brew an espresso beverage and we'll also brew a, a milk-based beverage, most likely cappuccino, to showcase the capabilities of the steam wands and how much foam that they can produce. Um, I may even try something like a flat white, something with a lower foam content so that you can see the difference in the micro foam as well. From experience, the uh, Oracle Touch has shown to be able to produce better microfoam um, 
and they, they both are sensors. So you're able to program the temperature and foam level. That's another thing. On the Breeze to Touch Impress, your sensor for your milk is located on the drip tray. So you have this little rubber ring with a circle, a silver circle in the center, and that's your temperature sensor. So that is how the machine knows to shut off the milk steaming. So you have to be very careful about where you place your uh, milk jug, your stainless steel milk jug on it. It has to be on the sensor. It also, if this sensor starts to become a little wiggly, you may have trouble with it reading the sensor. It may become even more sensitive. On the Oracle Touch, your sensor is actually on the steam wand. So wherever your jug is on the drip tray, as long as the steam wand is in it, then you're good to go. It also opens you up to be able to use larger or smaller um, frothing pitchers. Whereas from experience with the uh, Breville machines that have the sensor on the drip tray, you do have to use the Breville stainless steel jugs. I'm unsure if that's been updated, but I, I know that I've tried it without a Breville one and it kind of it overflowed and went all over the place. It wasn't reading the temperature properly, uh, which makes sense. And their jugs are a standard size, so not a big deal. You do have a smaller bean hopper on the Oracle Touch, which is kind of surprising. So it's around 230 to 240 grams compared to the Touch and Press, which is at 340 grams. So you have a look at our bag of our Colombian that we're using today. Most micro roasters or small batch roasters produce 340 gram bags. So for convenient pur convenience purposes, you can just dump the whole bag into the hopper. A lot of uh, espresso and coffee snobs may go, whoa, don't do that. You can, you'll go through the bag fast enough and the hoppers are also sealed to protect the beans against the UV rays, as well as keep them like tight and sealed to keep, stop the CO2 from releasing too quickly and keep them nice and fresh. Um, all right, let's go through some of the menus and some of the other uh, differences in the machine too. Oh. I wanted to touch on uh, for the touch and press as well. So you, you are paying a lot less money for this machine. One of the big things with this machine though is the barista guidance. So this machine will tell you exactly what to do and when to do it to fix your espresso. On the Oracle Touch, you're gonna need to know a little bit about what to do. Um, you're gonna need to know how to correct your grind size, when to go a little coarser or when to go a little bit finer based on your rate of pour. Um, and the touch and press is also pouring volumetrically, whereas the Oracle Touch pours by time. So you're always putting out 30 seconds of pouring, but not always the two ounces for a double. On the touch and press, you're always putting out two ounces, but the time will vary. I personally pr prefer to brew volumetrically, it makes more sense in my brain. That's how I've always dialed in my shots. So switching to a timed pouring is a little bit of, starts to kind of make my brain fry at first. And then it's this, but it's the same stuff. If your espresso is pouring too slowly, go a little bit coarser. If your espresso is pouring too fast, go a little bit finer. Um, with these machines though, luckily it's easier. There's less stuff that you have to know about dialing in. So let's uh, get brewing and talk more about some of the other features uh, and functions of these machines. So I'm going to first brew a, um, well, we're gonna brew a latte first, and then we'll do cappuccino afterwards. We'll see how the espresso pours, give it a little smell, everything good there. Um, so I'm going to start over at the Oracle Touch first. So we are going to be brewing today. Let's do, yeah, let's do a latte. Okay, so we're at grind size 18 here. Um, I did dial this machine in ahead of time, so hopefully the espresso is going to pour correctly still. So you start over at the left in this first little circly thing. When you pull the portafilter over and release, it's going to start grinding. So it's going to grind and then tamp. We're grinding right now. On the left-hand side of the machine is your grind adjustment. So it does indicate here, just on the dial, whether you wanna go faster or slower. So it just finished the tamping. I'm going to leave it in there. 
um, and I'm going to grind onto the touch and press and then we can do a direct comparison of the pucks right after tamping. So I'm going to just insert the portafilter into the forks here on the touch and press and I'm going to select latte. All right, I do notice as well on the touch and press that the screen is a lot, it's nicer, it's a little more crisp um, to when you're seeing it in person. The Oracle Touch has their older screen, so it's still nice and colorful and bright, um, but the touch and press it is a little bit nicer. Okay, so I'm gonna grind, we're on grind size 16 here for the touch and press. I'm just gonna click the first icon here. The touch and press also has color display icons when you're in your beverage. Whereas the Oracle Touch, like I said, has the older screen. So you have just grind, brew, milk, steam. On the touch and press it, it has little icons to show you the visual of each step. Okay, so now that we've ground the espresso, it's indicating for me to pull the lever down. So I'm just gonna press it down. You wanna press it until it clicks. There we go. And we have a good a dose level. So that is part of the barista guidance. On the touch and press, if we did not have enough coffee in the machine, they're not, there's not enough ground espresso, our dose is too low, it would tell us to grind a bit more. You would press the icon again and tamp. It may ask you to do that up to like five times sometimes. If you're changing your bean, change the grind size, et cetera. If there was too much, it would indicate to trim off a little bit more. So I'm gonna pull out the portafilters. So I've just tamped this down once. That looks pretty good. And the Oracle Touch, I'm just gonna flip these. All right, so we got the 54 from the Touch and Press and the 58 from the Oracle Touch. I do notice that the Oracle Touch is, um, it does have less loose grinds on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're probably pretty similar, actually, once I just shake it up a little bit, yeah. Both of them look really good though. Uh, sometimes I find with the touch and press, I do have to pull the tamper lever down twice. Not a big deal. It's just to smooth out those like loose little grinds on top, not the end of the world. I'm gonna put my portafilter up into the group head. So this little, the center of the machine here. So starting at the left and pull it all the way over to the right. There we go. And same thing with the touch and press. There we go. So I've got some little uh, mugs here. Uh, my larger mug is not going to fit underneath these portafilters, unfortunately, um, but that's okay. And I'm also gonna set up my milk. So for the touch and press, making sure that it's on the sensor. And for the Oracle Touch, making sure that um, it's fully inserted into the steaming wand, pulling it up and pressing the steam wand down. There you go. I fill my jugs up about halfway. That ensures the milk's not gonna overflow, but it also ensures that the wand is fully submerged in the steaming in the um, milk when you're steaming. Okay, so for the touch and press, we are going to press the center icon to start brewing. And on the Oracle Touch, I'm gonna go back into my latte, I'm going to click double and it's going to start brewing. I'm also gonna to start to froth my milk though, cause I can do the functions at the same time. Touch and press. My milk is going to steam after brewing. Ooh. These look like pretty good espresso shots, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Yeah, 24 seconds on the touch and press. Good. Beautiful. Okay. So we've got um, two espressos here. The milk is steaming on both machines. Ah, touch and press smells really balanced. I normally like a little bit of a longer extraction, um, usually around the 27 second mark for the Colombian, but it actually smells quite nice. The Oracle Touch does smell a little bit more over extracted, um, but not, not too bad. 
the milk will definitely help smooth that out. Okay. Oracle Touch's milk is complete. So I'm going to pour the espresso into my mug here. We did brew double shots today. And now I've got my milk. Oh, let me get a little cloth as well. Wipe that steam wand down. So you can, the Oracle Touch is going to purge automatically once I lower this wand down, which is why you want to be sure to wipe it down quickly because it is not an insula insulated uh, wand. So it, it's going to burn the milk on there. So I'm going to lower that down. All right. The touch impresses milk is also complete. So I'm gonna set that Oracle touch aside for a second, just to do a comparison between the two. All right, so espresso, espresso, milk as well. Yeah, Oracle touch has nicer milk. It really does. It, the uh, Barista, the touch and press is a little foamy on there. It's not much of a microfoam. It's just frothed, which is fine. But if your goal is latte art, which I know a lot of people is, this won't get you there. Just won't. Okay, so let's have a look here. You can see on the Oracle Touch, it's a lot creamier, a lot smoother. If I had put the, um, I was just steaming and brewing from stock. If I had decreased the amount of foam level, we were at level five, if we had gone to level three or four, we would probably have almost perfect latte art foam from the Oracle Touch. So we'll just mix that up for a second. There we go. Yeah, that looks really nice. Okay. I'll do the other one now, the touch and press. Yeah, it's just got some bigger bubbles in here. It's still nice foam. Foam is foam is foam. Okay, we have two lattes. So you can see there is quite a big difference between the froth level here. So we both, both of the machines, I believe, had froth level number five. Um, but you can see the, the touch and press has less foam on it. Oh, kind of the same, but more milk, which is a little bizarre because they did have the same amount of milk in them. Either way, cheers. It's really good. Um, yeah. It tastes like a latte. And Oracle Touch. Now this uh, espresso I know will have a bolder flavor. You can tell by the color. Oh, that's really good. And the, the, the milk is smoother and creamier. Yeah, that's very delicious. Both of these lattes are, are very good. Um, but the Oracle Touch's steam wand is superior. It just is, the, the foam that it produces is a lot, it is nearly a perfect micro foam. Like I said, if we had gone down in the, the froth amount, it would have been perfect for like latte or et cetera. On the touch and press, I know that you're able to get a micro foam. I've seen it done. I just don't find it to be as consistent as the Oracle Touch. Uh, that could have, a, a, it could be a number of reasons, you know, like if you, it could be a number of things that, that cause that to happen, the way you position the jug, if there's a slight tilt to it. Um, the, the milk does play a factor as well, of course, using regular cow's milk will always get you a better result for microfoam. But uh, yeah, Oracle Touch for milk foam, it's the way to go. Um, okay. so. Let's, uh, let's have a look at brewing just some espresso now and we'll just see about the flavor produced from each. So we tried the, the latte, delicious. Um, the Oracle Touch stands out a little bit for me with that guy just because of the milk foam. So we're gonna brew some espresso now. 
we are back. And before we get brewing some more espresso and beverages, um, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with us because it helps us out. And if you like our content, then you should subscribe to us. Okay, let's brew some espresso. So we're going to just brew espresso. I am, I don't typically drink a straight espresso shot. Like I said, I drink my coffee black. I like an Americano. Um, I, I do prefer more of like a medium. And so, but we're gonna brew just espresso. We're gonna do a direct taste comparison of just espresso. Um, so let's get brewing. Uh, we're gonna grind on the Oracle Touch first. Let's put my uh, portafilter up there and pull it over. Oh, I should select my beverage first. Okay, there we go. So we didn't make any changes. We're keeping everything the same. And I'm gonna do the touch and press, go to espresso, insert this, grind size 16 and click the portafilter. There we go, Oracle Touch is done. Ooh, ah, so beautiful. On the Oracle Touch, you'll notice that underneath where it says brew, it has single there. I'm just going to click that and click so that it says double instead. So it brews for a double shot. And now I'm going to click brew. On the touch and press, I'm gonna pull, push my lever down. And we have enough grinds in there. We got a good dose. We got quite a few little loose grounds on there. Um, not the end of the world. I'm gonna insert that. There we go. Okay, and brewing. All right, Oracle Touch is finished. The creme on here is really, really thick. It's the same beans though. And we did get about the two ounces from this guy. 25 seconds, that's a decent amount. All right, so we're gonna do a taste test here. Let's have a look. Mmm, crema looks so much better from the touch and press. I personally prefer to have more control over my espresso. Um, while the Oracle Touch does a beautiful job of steaming milk, if you're somebody that wants to like dive into the world of espresso, it's not the machine for you. The touch and press kind of is. Um, the barista guidance is one of the features on this machine that you're, is, you're paying for, which is why the cost is $2,200. You can turn that function off though, if you wanna just have the tamping handle, and be able to play around with your dose and with your, um, sorry, not your dose, but with the grind size and be able to kind of dial it in. You, you won't be able to get rid of the impress puck system, but you will be able to get turn off the barista guidance. Um, personally, I, I prefer that type of experience with my espresso. I like to be involved with it. Um, but the, if you don't want to do that, then either of these machines are a good option for you. The crema on the, uh, Oracle touch is, it's just a little funky. It almost looks like the espresso is over extracted. However, our output said kind of otherwise. So it smells a little over extracted as well, which is one of the reasons why I, I prefer personally to be more involved. Um, we could increase the grind size to be a little bit coarser as well to fix this espresso even more. Keeping in mind that I'm not a straight espresso drinker, it's good. Um, it didn't taste overly bitter or sour. Definitely had a, a nice strong body. 
It did leave a little bit of taste on my tongue, so I would want to make the grind size coarser to kind of alleviate that. That is one of the signs that something is, is over extracted. Um, touch and press now. I'm gonna just have a little bit of water first, just to cleanse my palate. Okay. It does, this extraction smells evener, even, smells more even. <laughs> um, Mm. That orange is right there um, with that extraction. So I, I prefer it this way actually um, to the Oracle Touch, but if you are somebody that likes a deeper body, then that's great. Um, so with the Touch and Press, I personally find that since you have slightly more control over kind of what's going on with the espresso, I, I think that it just is because of the volumetric. This is so close to being a super automatic. You can't really control the dose or the tamping pressure. So you're, you're kind of like stuck with that. Um, you can control it a little bit on the Oracle Touch, but on the barista, on the touch and press you have, while you don't have more control, I find that it's more precise. On the Oracle Touch, yeah, we have a much uh, much more extracted espresso. Doesn't always equal a better espresso. Doesn't always equal a worse espresso. Hmm. Okay. So those are my thoughts and feelings on these espressos. Um, let's talk a little bit more about who these machines are for. And if you're searching online and you're kind of looking between these two, um, why each machine would be better suited for you. So we've touched on it briefly, but the Touch and Press, um, it has more hands-on functions and features. Uh, so you are more involved with the espresso process. You can turn off that barista guidance. So if you're somebody that wants to do a little bit of the work for your espresso, but not all of it, or maybe doesn't want the mess on the countertop, this is a fantastic option. Um, it is, Price at $2,200, you get a two year warranty through Breville with this machine, two liter water tank. It's got the larger bean hopper, beautiful touch screen. Also really great for people that have multiple users. Um, with the tamping handle, with the impress puck system, you get the consistent tamping pressure every single time. So some people, you know, tamping pressure should stay relatively consistent, but myself and Joe Schmo are gonna have different tamping pressures, we just will and that's totally fine. So that keeps it consistent for a multi-person household. The display touchscreen makes it super easy for you to navigate through and see what type of beverages you're going to be drinking. So awesome for the beginner as well, because it's just going to display the beverage and you're going to see what you're going to be making. So if you don't know what it is that you want, or you don't know what a cappuccino is, you don't know what a latte is, um, this machine has those recipes built in. So that's great. The milk wand is good. So um, with this machine, you do have the new milk wand from Breville. So it is an insulated wand. You can tell by the red ring on it. Uh, and you are able to customize on this machine whether you're using alternative milks. On that note though, the Oracle Touch still frosts alternative milks well, because I think that it just has a better steaming wand. Probably has to do as well with the dual boiler, better pressure. Um, yeah, so just something to keep in mind there. If you're an alternative milk drinker, you can customize that in this machine. It does have the sensor on the drip tray, which I mentioned isn't like the most ideal, but it's still fine and it reads the temperature accurately and it does a decent job foaming. Uh, this machine is also really great for somebody that has a little bit of limited space on the countertop because it is a relatively standard size for a home espresso machine. So if you are concerned about height or your width or your depth or anything like that, this is a better machine. It's for you because it's smaller. It's a little bit more compact, um, especially in the height. On to, okay, the Oracle Touch. This is the same kind of customer base um, except if you want to be involved in your espresso at all, it's not for you. It just is not. It's nearly a super automatic. It's it's basically a super automatic with a porta filter. Um, it is still considered a semi-auto though. It is larger as well. So this is a massive machine. A lot of people do have trouble fitting this underneath any cupboards or cabinets that you have in your kitchen. If you have a standalone coffee bar, then no problem. 
it's heavy and it's big. So um, moving it around can be a little bit frustrating. Moving it back and forth though is easy. You do have a lock and unlock mechanism here to be able to bring the machine onto its wheels and kind of roll it around. A little stuck, there we go. Uh, water tank is accessible on this machine from either the top, which is really great, especially if you don't have anything overhead. It's easier than reaching around to the back. You also have access to the water tank from the back of the machine on the Oracle Touch if you needed to completely empty the machine for transportation, which is always recommended. Uh, these machines are going to also require the same cleaning processes, so you're going to need to descale and clean slash back flush these machines. So the machine will notify you when those processes need to be done and you get do get starter cleaning supplies with this these machines as well. Um, so the descaling process on the touch and press is easy. It takes like uh, 10 to 20 minutes. It's so, so simple. Um, but on the Oracle Touch, since it's a dual boiler, those boilers need to be emptied and filled individually. So you do need, it is more involved for the descaling. We do have a video on how to descale the Oracles. They're the Breville's dual boiler system machine. So you can check that out. We'll just put the, the link either up top or down in the description below. Um, but you need to access it. You need a screwdriver. Um, it doesn't come with it. So you need to have your own screwdriver at home. And you need to go through the process. I think it took us almost like 45 minutes, an hour. So it takes a while. Another reason you might want to go for the Oracle Touch, I'm gonna leave that alone. Another reason you might wanna go for the Oracle Touch over the Touch and Press is your volume. A dual boiler system is able to keep up with a larger volume of brewing. So I'm not recommending that you put this in a cafe, but if you are going to be brewing a lot more coffees, then the Oracle Touch is a better option for you. The Touch and Press would simply not be able to keep up with um, the same amount that the Oracle Touch could just because of the heating system. The, the dual boiler system is, that is what you use in a more commercial setting. So you will have a, a dual boiler system. Um, or if you're having like a super automatic, that's a different story. But in terms of semi-autos, it's a dual boiler. So larger quantities of brewing, the Oracle Touch, way, way, way over the touch and press, but not recommending you to use it in your cafe. Um, for these machines as well, you're gonna have the same warranty. So I said, this guy is two years. Oracle Touch is also two years. The touch and press has 25 grind settings and the Oracle Touch has 45. So you have a lot more grind size to play with there. Uh, both grinders are also stepless and they are Baratza M2 burrs. So they are the sharper burrs from Baratza, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, these are both really great machines. Obviously they have a lot of similarities, but there is some massive differences between these machines. Let us know if you have any more questions about either of these units or any other units that you might be uh, thinking about. Leave them down below and make sure you give us a thumbs up if you liked our video and uh, we'll see you later guys. Cheers.